uh, a few things about the laws of Zimon. One of the things we tried to figure out was if there are only two, two men, could they do a Zimon? We tried to bring proofs. And we do have two opinions among the Amairoim, the Talmudic rabbis, Rav and Rabbi Yechanan. We don't know clearly who said what, but the part will try to prove which one says what their view is. But one of them says you're allowed to, if two people want to do a zimun, they can. And the other rabbi says if two people want to do a zimun, they can't. We do know the halacha is that three people are obligated at doing a zimun, two people are not obligated to do a zimun. But Argumar is wondering if they want to, are they allowed to? May they do a zimun if you only have two men? And um, then the Gemara brought these two views, Rav and Rabbi Yechanan. And the Gemara tried to prove it from our Mishnah, but our Mishnah really talks about obligation, that you need three to be obligated to a zimun, two is not obligated, doesn't really tell us if two would be allowed to. We brought a Brisa or a Mishnah later, and uh, there it mentions, Ein Rishoim Lecholek, uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 if you have three people eating together, they're not allowed to uh, separate and, and bench on their own, and one of them can't uh, take off. And the understanding is because if he takes off, then the other two maybe won't be able to do a zimun. And the Gemara answered, no, it's not that they won't be able to do a zimun, but they won't be able to do an obligatory zimun. They'll, ha- they'll be able to do an optional zimun. And therefore, one of them can't take off. So that disproved uh, the, uh, this, uh, this proof, this, that disproved our, what we assumed. We thought we had a little proof over there. And uh, the proof would have been that you need three to do a zimun. Two people are not able to do a zimun. The Gemara says it's not a proof. Two people maybe could, could do a zimun, but it would be, only be an optional zimun. Then the Gemara brought a third proof, and the third proof had to do with the shamash, who uh, stands and uh, attends to the people who are eating. And uh, the, the Brisa says that the Shamash uh, eats with the two people who he's servicing. And if he's eating with the two, he, uh, he, can, uh, he can bench with them. Uh, he, he can eat with them even if they didn't give him permission. And the assumption is because he's going to be able to make them do a Zimun if he eats together with them. And... Uh, Uh, and so the understanding is, why are we allowing him this, uh, 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 this uh, ability to eat together with the, these dignified individuals uh, who are eating? Well, why are we doing that and telling him he could eat with them? And even though they didn't give him permission, it must be because he's going to allow them to do the zimun. And that's why we're allowing him to do That's why we're, we're telling him he's, al- he's allowed to eat with them because he's going to make their zimun into a, he's going to make them be able to do a zimun. It implies that if they only were two people alone, they would not be able to do a zimun. They need him to make it into a zimun. And the Gemara answer is it's not a proof similar to the answer that we gave earlier that maybe uh, having him join will allow them to do an obli- obligatory zimun. If he would not join, it would only be an optional zimun maybe. So therefore, we don't have a proof. And then the Gemara brought this um, uh, uh, another proof, and this proof was a little more complicated. This proof had to do with women. Very, very complicated Gemara. The Gemara, the, the Gemara brings a, a brisa that says women uh, are mezamein to themselves. They do a zimun themselves, and slaves do a zimun themselves. And women, slaves, and children, if they want to do a zimun, they cannot do a zimun. And then the Gemara says, uh, that's the b'risa. Now, there are different ways of reading that b'risa. It could mean women are obligated to do a zima themselves, and slaves are obligated to do a zima themselves. But when they're together with Nashim, Avodim, and Ketana, when you have all three together, they, if they want to, they cannot do a zima. That's one way. Another way of reading it was the way we learned it, and that is that women, if they want to do a zima, they can do a zima. If slaves want to do a zimun, they can do a zimun. But if they're together with, with women, slaves, and children, if they want to do a zimun, they cannot do a zimun. So in other words, women are never obligated to do a zimun. But if they do, if they want to, uh, if, they're a lo- if they're 
you know, with women together, uh, they can do a zimun, but they can't do a zimun if they're with uh, slaves and with children. Now, the Gemara wanted to bring a proof and an interesting term the Gemara uses. A hundred women is like two men. That could be sound very, uh, could sound very... Uh, 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 Sexist, that's the word. What was, what's the word? Sexist. Yeah, sexist. Okay, I guess that's the best word uh, uh, to say. A hundred, a hundred uh, men, a hundred women are like two men. But what the Gemara, you have to know what the Gemara means. There, there are two ways of learning this Gemara, really. A hundred. Uh, she's saying you can even put a hundred women together if you're still short a zimun. I don't think he's saying a hundred women are equal to two men. Okay, I think he's saying you could even have a hundred women. And you still have the same problem as you have with two men. You don't have oh. a zikun. Okay, but it's still implying that 100 women are basically considered. But if you don't have a zikun, right. You, you just don't have the concept of zikun you can talk about. But it's not a matter of equivalency of bodies. You can't do this. Right. Well, if you put 100 of you together, you still can't do this. Okay, fine. But... Yeah. but it, that, okay, so so that that that's a, a good point, a good way of, of wording it. But the the um, there are two ways of of understanding what the Gemara is saying. One way is that the Gemara is taking this idea from the fact that if you look in the counts, all the counts in the Torah, in the counting, the men are counted, and the women are not counted. And because of that, we understand that the, when it comes to a minion, there needs to be men. Men uh, constitute the minion where we know you need 10. And the un understanding is that you need to have 10 men for the minion. Now, when it comes to the, uh, the laws of tefillah, when it comes to davening, and Tysus brings this out, uh, when it comes to the laws of davening, you need a minion. You need 10. And... Um, The, the, the rule is that, let's say you have nine men, even a hundred women will not make up your minion. If you have eight men, a hundred women will not make up your minion. It doesn't help. It, they are not counted for minion because minion needs requires men. So they, they, they are... Their numbers don't matter. It's not that they're not valuable. You wouldn't have the future of the Jewish people without women. And in fact, the Jew Jewishness is dependent on the mother. But nevertheless, when it comes to numbers, we don't, we don't calculate, we don't consider them, we don't count the number when it comes to women. Men are calculated. Women are not, which could mean a positive thing. It means they're Maybe they're beyond numbers. I don't know. I'm just throwing a thought there. But the, the, the idea is that uh, they do not fall into that category as being counted for a minion. Now, the, um, the Gemara is saying this to emphasize that if you need three men to make up a zimun, and we know that women... Um, would be considered, uh, you need three men. Women would obviously not constitute three men. But we do find that women could make a zimun themselves. So on the one hand, we know from other laws of the Torah that women are not counted as in numbers. And we know from the law of zimun that they could make a zimun which needs three men. So the Gemara's understanding, it must be that women are considered like two. In other words, you could count them, you could consider the women similar to a case where you have two men. Women could be like as if they are two men, because just like two men are not obligated in Zimun, women are also not obligated in Zimun. And therefore, 
it, it, when you when the Mishnah says or the Brisa says that women could make a zimon, it must mean that even two men could also make a zimon if they want to. Meaning, women are never obligated to make a zimon. They're not counted like they're not considered like three men. But if you have women and they the the Mishnah the Brisa says they could do a zimon, that means that you don't necessarily need. Three men, you could do something like an optional zimun. Women could be considered. So if women could do a zimun, that sort of, that implies that two men could also do a zimun because women would be considered like two men because just like two men are not obligated to zimun, women are not obligated to zimun. So you have three women is similar to having two men. Now, it doesn't mean, as Isaac says, doesn't mean that three is equal to two. It, it's just saying the in, in legal matters, women are not counted in numbers. But so having three women would be similar in the, in, the, in the situation that we're talking about of Simon where you have two men. And so therefore we're taking the, from the law of Minyan, we're taking that idea that women are not counted and we're bringing it to the laws of Simon. And we're mentioning that a hundred women would be similar, be basically a, a similar case to like having less than the needed amount of men, which would be like two men. So when you have a hundred women, it would be similar to two men. And the Gemara seems to think that this might be a proof. So you see, just like women can make a zeman if they want to, men could also make a zeman if they want to. If they're not, they didn't reach the, the number that they need. They could also do a zeman if they want to. Now, the other way of learning Gemara is you don't have to take any, any ideas from Minyan. Another way of re- learning Gemara is simply from the laws of zeman itself. What we find is in zeman laws itself, what do you need to make a zimun? Three. We know to three is obligated in a zimun. So if uh, three is obligated in a zimun, and, uh, uh, and and we find that women can make a zimun, but they're not obligated to, so comes out that there must be three women, three women would be similar, or 100 women would be similar to two men because you would have a case where someone's not obligated, but they can make a zimun, and that would be similar to, uh, to, this, uh, to this law. So if you look, Rashi learns this second way, and in the third line, Rashi says, A hundred women are like two regarding the obligation, that they're, neither of them are obligated really in a zimun. They're not obligated, but if they want, they could do it. So so, so, Tysis, so, so the way Rashi learns is, so you see from the laws of Zimon, 100 is like two. Again, it's, it's regarding the law, similar to what Isaac said, it's regarding to the laws. We're not calculating for the value of, of women. We're, we're, we're emphasizing the, the, uh, the legality of women with regard to a Zimon, that just like women would not be obligated in a, in a Zimon, uh, and men uh, under, three, under three men are also not obligated at Zimon. So 100 women is like, is like would be similar to the law of two men. And if women could do it, then two men could do it. And the Gemara concludes and says, no, it's not a proof because with women, they might not be counted, but they are valuable. They, they, they have their views. They have their, they are, uh, we, we, the fact is that they are praising God. And there's three people there praising God. So even though we don't count numbers, but we do count deus, we count the fact that they are there praising Hashem. And therefore, if women could do it, it doesn't mean that men could do it. And um, three opinions of women are better than two uh, than two men. And um, and this is what Rashi says. If you look at the next Rashi, he says that Ika Deyos, the Avagad in Choiva, in Chayova, even though they're not obligated women, Linyan Rashus, Deyos Shloisha, regarding for something that's permissible. So Deyos Shloisha, three opinions, is Hashibi, is important, Lahoidais, to praise Hashem, Tfe, more than two men. So if you look at the conclusion of the Gemara, if you weren't uh, turned off before, and you wait to the end, you actually get the opposite. That three women are more, their three, their opinions are more valuable than the two opinions of the men. They're famous and they're 
their praise of Hashem is more valuable than two, two of men, two praise of men. And they fall into the category of praise and exalt God with me. So what it comes out is that the Gemara is sort of saying that it's not about numbers here with regard to a minion that we know you need numbers, not like having numbers, but it's regarding praising Hashem with me, which that verse doesn't emphasize that they're calculated. It just emphasizes that there's a plural with a single. So as long as you have two plural, or in other words, two people with an individual, with another individual, that allows you to do a zebra. And therefore, we don't have a proof to two men. And so the Gemara basically drops the, 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 uh, this situation. We have no proof. We have uh, two opinions. The Rav and Rabbi Yechonah. The Gemara was not able to prove either way. The Gemara uh, tried to ask another question. Why, why can women and slaves make, uh, not, not make a zimun? The Gemara answered over there that uh, it doesn't have to do with praising Hashem. Over there, there's a, there's a side issue, a technical issue. When women and slaves get together, we're nervous that there could lead to some type of promiscuity and other uh, um, inappropriate behavior. And therefore, uh, we can't have women and slaves doing the zimun together. Um, and uh, so the conclusion of the Gemara is uh, we, don't, we can't prove which, uh, which opinion, we can't prove uh, either, either way. We have these two views. And the Gemara then says, well, let's try to see which opinion, who says what. Then the Gemara goes through, uh, is Rav say this way, or Rabbi Yechanan, which one do they hold? And Susan, you had a question. <clears throat> what I was going to say was that uh, the fact that we're not obligated, or we, we can, we're not obligated to say grace after meals, but I'm, I'm always very aware that I, I, I need to you do You are that. obligated to do grace after meal. Well, that's what you, yeah. a zeman is, a grace after meals? No, zeman is the pre- prepping <laughs> for the grace after meal. There's a paragraph really before the grace after meal that's called the zeman. I see. So it's a grace different after prayer. meal itself, you're supposed to say. If you eat right. bread, if you eat bread, you're supposed to do the whole grace after meal. If you're okay. gluten free, you get a little exemption there. But if, well, no, it depends. No, but I oatmeal, always say, gra- I always say, oh, grace after meals. I mean, it's just, but I also say a prayer before I cook. Okay, well, well, listen, you have to differentiate <laughs> between what you, your extra stuff that you do on your own and things that you're ob- ob- obligated to do. Because if you don't differentiate between the two, you're going to end up giving the same value to your own uh you know, special, your, 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 your donation, you're going to give the same value to things you must do and you shouldn't. You should know that there's a difference. There are certain things you have to do and certain things that are extra. If you want to make your own prayers, that's very nice. And you could speak to God all day. And that's a beautiful thing to speak to God. But you should know that there's prayers that are uh, obligations there's on food and other things. And that's an obligation that should not be mixed in with your oh, extra donations. There's two separate things. What you need to do and what you want to do well, extra, I, two separate. You have to say the grace after meal for a bread meal. Okay? That is an obligation. You have to keep Shabbos. If you want to celebrate your son's graduation, that's another story that you can do, but you don't have to. It's a separate thing. Okay, if you want to praise God all day, that's beautiful. But you I'm didn't not talking say the about praising God. What I'm saying is that I make a praise. prayer. I make a prayer. Obviously, well, I don't. I don't want to separate. I don't want to stop the class. I, I want you to. Okay. I, Simone, do you have a question? Yes, I do. So, just the the word um, "deus," which you've been translated as opinion. And the other books I have translated as mind, I'm assuming that's related to the word das. Could you tell me a little bit more about that translation, deos, what they're talking about here? I don't have the best vocabulary. So if you, uh, you know, you're always welcome to share what the book says. Uh, I'll be happy to uh, tweak my, uh, my, my words. I, I, I put in, I don't check the uh, art scroll before I uh, give my class. Um, 
So uh, just in case I, my, my, uh, my word might be, uh, I might choose a different word than the, um, you know, vocabulary experts of art school that sometimes come up with words that no one knows what they mean. Um, but uh, the idea of deus, um, uh, what, the, what the main point that we're using here is, uh, emphasizing here is that, you know, when you have more people praising God coming from different mouths, different minds, that is more valuable than coming from two. In other words, three, three minds praising God is more valuable than two minds praising God. Right. And it's based on the verse of, of, of God, Lul Hashem, Iti, let us exalt God. Uh, exalt God with me to that it's saying to a plural to a communal um, group at least minimum of two uh, it's saying you plural should praise God with me that is uh, fits with as long as there's three minds or three you could call it opinions uh, um, but I guess the word minds is probably better if they chose it and they have bigger scholars than myself so uh, we'll use the word minds um, so they, uh, there are three minds praising God, that's better than two, and therefore three women could be considered more valuable than having two men praising God. And therefore maybe women are, we know women are allowed to do the zimut. Uh, men could be that they can't, but they're only two. Is this the same word as when we say chachma bin and das? This is the same word, right? Das? Well, it's, it's the same root, uh, root word. Yeah. yeah the okay. same root but it's a yeah yes, but I, you know and, and and we we often translate das as the action uh from you know that that you that you uh um you what you're taking from your chachma and bina and bringing it into action is generally the understand the 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 das aspect of it i don't know if deo specifically ties in with that you know, with that specific translation based on Tanya, you know what I mean? It's the, the idea of das, is, yes, they always come from the same word. But again, if you want to start, you know, getting into the specifics of what das is. Um, That's fine. That's I don't good. know That's, if it would I'm be fine. different than, than Bina, you know what I mean? Or the Chachma, you know, could the, 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 the different... You don't have to go there, it's okay. Mind. It's, it's the mind. I think the mind is a, is a good translation. Yes, uh, Isaac. I believe Rabbi Victor Miller defines Deus as awareness of. Uh -huh. We go about our days. Deus Hashem is an awareness that there is a God and whatever goes with that, just a conscious awareness as opposed to, oh yeah. So what I think what they're saying is when it comes to the Zimun as opposed and the arguments that are going back and forth. It's Deus Hashem, it's not doing whatever you're doing. It's the introduction to do your Zimun, to do something together. This is basically someone knocking on the table and saying, folks, let's stop eating for a minute. Let's recognize this is all from Hashem and let's thank him. Now, if that is a religious ritual as such, there is an argument, not a matter of better or worse or failing or not, there are things women can do that men can't do. But that women do not have the same obligation on their neshama to fulfill as we do. And therefore, things like minion, or whatever, you count Jewish bodies as it were. I wouldn't say Jewish bodies, men. When you're talking about deus, and what the Gemara is saying, this has nothing to do with that aspect of doing a performance of something, a ritual that requires certain spiritual energies. This is just a matter of saying, folks, an awareness, let's thank Hashem. And women have the same deus, the awareness, and are able to say the same thank you to Hashem as men can. And therefore, I think just in terms of taking the same thing you're saying, 
but it's just a matter of what are you doing? You're doing a basic activity. Thank you, Hashem. Anybody can do that. If you're talking about something that involves the ritual, there's an obligation to fill in. A man needs his arm and his heart and his head to be tuned in to on the frequency in the morning. That's the best thing for the male soul and body. Women don't require that. Okay, so 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 uh, Isaac, thank you, uh, Isaac. So um, what what Isaac is trying to explain is why would it be that a uh, for the Zimun, why would the three people, including women, why would that be enough? Why would that be good? When it, and when it comes to a minion for prayer, you know, we, we don't count women. What would, be, what would the reason be? Why could women be calculated for a Zimun, uh, uh, at least on their own? In other words, not with men, but if they're on their own. And when it comes to a minion of women, let's say you had 10 women, that wouldn't that wouldn't work, and it's it's a tough. I must say it's a very tough question uh, uh, that that Isaac is uh, uh, trying to uh, to find an answer. He's trying to explain that deus. When it comes to zimun, it's all about deus, and when it comes to minion, it's more of a ritual. That's what and the Gemara is postulating. We're dealing with something that's deus. Men you're you're working hard on trying to answer this question. It's a, it's a hard question. And you're uh, endeavoring, uh, you know, to, to try to give, come up with an answer. And I think you've come up something with uh, you're definitely getting close or hot. Um, and uh, what Isaac is saying, I think it's a very, very nice uh, insight. It's trying to emphasize, we see it in the Gemara here, that there's a concept by Zimon is deus. And uh, the question is, how do you then differentiate that with a minion when you have 10 women? Why can't they make a minion? Why isn't it good enough to have deus there? Because and it's not deus. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to explain what you're saying. So by there, you're, you're emphasizing that it's more of a ritual. And here it's all about deus. And deus is more of a pra just praise, praise itself. Uh, the ritual of a minion is... Is, is more of a spiritual uh, um, connection than just a, a mind connecting to God. It's a, there's, there's more to it. Now, I, I personally, I think you have to work on it. I think, I think that's not a full answer, but I think you're getting somewhere. I, I also want to mention that I, when I said about Deus, that maybe it, it doesn't fit with the, um, uh, if you want to get into the specifics of what Das is versus Chachman Bina, maybe it does fit actually very well. Deus is from the word, uh, it's brought in Tanya, that Deus is connected to Adam Yoda Chava, that, that man knew, uh, that Adam knew Eve, meaning that he had, uh, he was intimately connected to her uh, and he knew her, means that he was uh, bonded with her. And that is... Uh, Maybe when you're praising Hashem, it's supposed to be in a way of bonding that we are fully acknowledging Hashem, that that's the type of praise we're supposed to reach. In other words, it shouldn't just be like a thank you where, you know, really, uh, sometimes you say thank you because you sort of just have to say thank you, but you don't know how much the person really cared what he did for you. And you just say thank you here. It's like a deus really does maybe supposed to be a real bond of thanks heartfelt. to Hashem. What is that? Heartfelt. Heartfelt. Uh, a real uh, bond. Adam Yoda Schava, that man that Adam knew Eve, similar bonding that when we're bonding to Hashem with this day. But anyway, I think it's a very um, uh, very nice to try to work on uh, understanding the, why would Zimon uh, benching only be about deus. When uh, I think that's a interesting uh, uh, topic, Isaac, and I think you should work a little more on it. Uh, come up with uh, a uh, what they call a chaticha haruiyah like a, a nice uh, a nice dinner. Kudrus nice. Okay, uh, Susan. Yes. A, a year ago, in one of the first classes, someone asked about why women don't daven. And you said, because it's a different spiritual energy and a different connection to Hashem. And that totally satisfied me. But I don't, I, I'm, no, I'm still with the program. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. 
now we're going to uh, continue. So we, uh, so then the Gemara wanted to prove which view holds what. Oh boy, my time is up. Okay, let's let's try to do this fast. So the Gemara wanted to first say that maybe it makes sense that Rob holds that if they want to do a zimon, if two men want to do a zimon, they can't. And uh, the proof was because uh, we had this uh, case, and this is a. Uh, there's two ways of learning this this law, and I mentioned them yesterday, but I didn't go through both of them fully. The um, there's a law that if three people ate together, and it, it it's a, a little hard to imagine how this worked, but you had three people eating together. One of them left to the to the marketplace or to the uh, to to the shuk, and uh, uh, took off. One of them took off. So now the other two want to bench. They want to say the grace after meal, but the, of course they're supposed to do a zimun because they ate together with three people, but the other guy took off. So they now want to call him. So they call him, and the simple understanding, at least the one way of learning this is, they're calling him and telling him, turn around, face us, get ready, we're about to bench, answer with us, we're benching right now. And he runs back and they bench, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, or the messenger, or they sent some other messenger, or, they, or one of the people who was eating went and got him. Anyway, so that goes, you have two guys sitting where they ate and benching, and the other guy's in the marketplace trying to buy something in Macy's, and he's turning around and uh, facing them and sees them eating. I guess they were in some restaurant nearby, uh, you know, or they were eating together. It must have been very close because he's going to be able to hear them, or they're holding up a sign maybe that they're saying, Rabbi sign Mervel and Benchin, and whatever it is, somehow he's here facing them, and uh, he's going to be mezamein, uh, they can be mezamein with him, even though he's not returning to the place. So that's the, the simple understanding here. Um, and the Gemara says, you see from there, why do they have to call the guy? Let them just do a zimun uh, without the guy, right? Let them do a zimun without him. They're two people. If they, they're able to do a zimun, let them do a zimun. They have to call him. And, uh, and the only way it works, they call him and he faces them and so on. And so that's the, uh, so the Gemara says that that, that seems, uh, oh, if Rob holds, you got to do that. It must be that you need, uh, you need him to do the, you need the third person to do a zimun. If you don't have three, two people cannot do a zimun, even optional. So that, that is the initial thought of the Gemara. The Gemara says, no, it's not a proof. Maybe they can only do a optional zimun without this third guy, but you need the third guy in order to do a real zimun. And so that's the, um, that is the, uh, 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 conclu- the Gemara's conclusion that we don't have a proof that Rob holds you can't do a zimun with two. Maybe you could. You just don't because you can't do an uh, obligational zimun. You could do uh, you could do an optional zimun. So um, now the uh, the Gemara then concludes that that it must be Rabbi Yechanan who says that if two people want to do a zimun, they cannot do a zimun. And what's the proof? Because uh, Rabbi Abrahana said the name of Rabbi Yechonah, uh, two people lay together. So one of them is Yoitze with the other one's bracha. And not that, um, uh, not, not that they both combine together in Zimun. No, one of, them, you could, one of them could have the other one in mind. So he's implying like you can't do a Zimun. That's what the Gemara understands. That Rabbi Yechonah is saying that you cannot do a Zimun when you have two people. So the Gemara th- seems to understand that as a good proof. And, um, and Reb Zera explains it that way. He says that it's, that you can't, there's no Zimun when you have the, that's the way uh, Reb Zera explained it. He said, you can't be, you can't be telling us that you, if you don't answer our main, it's good enough. Cause we know if you don't answer our main, if you have in mind, you still fulfill the obligation. So it can't be about our main. It must be telling you that, uh, if two people want to do a zimun, they cannot. They don't do a zimun. And that's the Gemara's conclusion. And then uh, the Gemara said that uh, the Gemara asked the question um, that the rabbis came from Eretz Yisrael and, uh, and they said that you could do a zimun. Uh, they probably heard it from Rabbi Yechonen. So how could you just conclude that Rabbi Yechonen is the one who says you can't do a zimun, even an optional zimun, you can't do? Uh, we, the rabbis from Israel came to Bavel, came to Babylon, and said you could do a zimun. So he must have heard it from Rabbi Yechonon. So it can't be Rabbi Yechonon. So, so, so how can you tell me Rabbi Yechonon says you can't do it? These rabbis came from Israel. Whereas, no, they came from Israel, but they came, 
they heard it from Rav before Rav came to Bubble. Rav was the other view. And Rav was of the other, other opinion. Rav came to Baba later. Originally, Rav was also in Eretz Yisrael. Because Rav originally was in Eretz Yisrael, therefore they, uh, they heard it from Rav, probably, and they came to Bavel, and they came with this teaching from Rav, not from Rabbi Yechanan. So Rabbi Yechanan, the Gemara's conclusion is that he holds that, um, that uh, the Gemara's conclusion is that he holds that um, um, Rabbi Yechanan holds you cannot do a Zimun even optional. Now, I mentioned there's two ways of learning the previous Gemara. The Gemara continues uh, with this discussion, but that previous Gemara, the case, the two ways of learning is, does that third guy who went to the marketplace, does he have to return to the other, to, to, to where the other people are uh, and do the grace with them? Or can he just face them and stay where he is? So one of the, 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 the way we learned earlier is that he just stays there and he faces them and it's good enough and so on. Uh, but there is another way of learning it. And the other way of learning it is a little more complicated, but because the next Gemara doesn't flow so well, but the other way of learning it is that he is obligated to return with them and they have to get him to do the Zimun. And they get him and bring him back to do the zimun with them in the place where they ate. And so that is the other way of learning it. And we'll have to, fit, we'll have to learn the next Gemara inside to see the two ways of, of learning the continuation of the Gemara. Because uh, what, one of the ways works very well with the next Gemara. But the other way doesn't seem to flow so well. So we'll have to learn it inside. But my time is really up. So I want to wish all of you a very good Shabbos.